Skydrew for the building! <laughs> What's up, BG? How you doing, bro? I am doing fantastic. Boys, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I love uh, where you're hanging out there, man. What's going on with that? Just grab a little leaf, pack it in the bong right here, throw it down. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> party time, party time. Party Fellas, time. Uh, sure. it was excellent seeing you at the festival. I uh, There was a crazy incident that occurred exactly when you guys were playing we talked about it but for those that may not know who you guys are can you please properly introduce yourself let us know whereabouts in the world you currently are and plug or promote anything you'd like yeah we're sky drifter i'm laramie lake uh this is nick potter and ryan castle's back here kind of dinking off hey, we're dinking uh, off. we're from elko nevada which is northeastern corner halfway between reno and salt lake and uh, I'd like to plug Voodoo Studios up in Montana for recording our last record. Uh, if you're looking to record a record at a reasonable price, uh, good quality, hit up Phil Yanzik from Voodoo Studios. I didn't know you guys went to Montana to do that recording. How did you, yeah. how'd you, how'd you find him? So it's a long line of stuff, you know, like you're in a million bands that break up while you, while, you know, as you're forming new bands and stuff. So. Originally, I met him through a long line of fan uh, or of bands that we were in, and then when my band broke up, I moved up and started playing guitar for a Midnight Drive, and he was the singer for a Midnight Drive. And so uh, we played and toured for about three years, and when my dad got sick, uh, I moved back to Nevada to uh, kind of take over the household and finish raising my younger brother, who was only 13 at the time. I adopted him and did all that, but um, that's how we knew each other. And now he sings for a band called Hibernator plugging them hibernator is sick and uh yeah they do a lot of recordings they did like nevermind's new record um and they had to have a lot of stuff like that our style that indie and then they kind of go around in that genre but you know anything i mean he can he's a genius and you know i actually wanted to talk about him a little bit you know whenever but there you go that was a good plug for him you set him up nicely there i'd say uh <laughs> tell me the story of johnny harpoon who is johnny harpoon so that, that, that is a cool story, and it is kind of uh, centered around our, our band. There's a, that album is kind of a loose concept album, and uh, we, we might go further into detail with that with this next record. We've been kind of talking about it, but Johnny Harpoon is basically a retired rocker who is kind of uh, a wreck. You know what I mean? He's uh, on the downhill slope of his of his career and he uh, is struggling with alcoholism and drug abuse and, you know, attitude issues. And ultimately, you know, this other character, the sky drifter uh, is kind of like a interdimensional being that helps people. He kind of sets into motion uh, events that would uh, bring on self-awareness. So Johnny Harpoon essentially uh, is this character who gets brought into this Alice in Wonderland like experience that forces him to change his life. And when he comes out of it, he ultimately becomes the sky drifter. It's kind of this convoluted story that I came up with, you know, smoking weed and doing psychedelics. <laughs> is that is that kind of what you told the actor in Trippy Dreamin'? And then and then exactly he, and then he kind of like just does his lackadaisical dancing and stuff to the street. Is that kind of like how you described it to him? Yeah, well, and it goes more personal too, but uh so Clint the guy that did that acting, he's one of the most uh, profound. What's the word I'm looking for? He's a, a character actor, method actor. He's a he he an impersonator. He does Elvis Presley, Willie Nelson, like a number of really good impersonations. He can sing and act just like people. Even into the presidents, he can act. Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash and he goes. And so, to go further into Johnny Harpoon, Johnny Harpoon. You know, I don't talk about this much, but I figured I'd start opening up about it more because it's the direction we're going. Johnny Harpoon was created because he was an alter ego that my dad invented while going through schizophrenia. My dad essentially invented and became Johnny Harpoon. Wow. Interesting. I, yeah. ha I happen to have some Johnny Harpoon test number two sauce here. 
that was gifted <laughs> by uh, my good buddy Ryan, who's uh, back there somewhere. Ryan, if you're down, shall we shall we test out your sauce together? Because yeah, I think I got the bottle. Let me go grab it. Because we're best friends. Because we're best friends, right? <laughs> best friends, best damn friends that you ever had, man. So, plug. Tell me, tell me about this song. So, something. There's a couple observations I've made having seen this video about 20 times now. I've noticed that the bong here disappears about halfway through, which means when you guys were shooting, you grabbed it, you smoked out, and then you forgot to put it back for the for continuity error reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I understand. And did Taco Bell sponsor the video? Dude, we tried like hell to reach the Taco Bell. That was like our whole thing. We're like, you know, Taco Bell, that whole fueled by ramen and you would get free food, essentially touring from Taco Bell. They would give you a band card, essentially. But um, no sponsors. And yeah, as that video went on, we smoked more, we drank more, and uh, it just kept getting more ridiculous. Hell yeah. Ridiculous is awesome if it's done correctly and you guys do it correctly. Uh, here we go. Let's try out this sauce, Ryan, and because uh, you're my best friend. It's, it's definitely got the kick for the chili heads. Uh, I do have a, a less hot recipe that I make too, but this one's more fun, obviously. Yeah, that one's that one's more fun, but it's it's got a good bite to it, but you can it's flavorful. That's what I really mm -hmm. like about it. You can taste all the roasted garlic in it. Now I've known Ryan forever, and he's always kind of forced me to. Uh, try as hot sauces and they're way too hot for me. And so therefore I'm like, man, you just like it hot or what is up with that flavor? And he's like, that flavor is amazing. What's wrong with you, you know? And so it's kind of always been a, like when we were driving down to a local band smoke out, they were feeding me, what were those? They were barbecue flavored. Oh, they were the, they were the Carolina Reaper uh, almonds. The blue well, almond almonds, the Carolina so first Reaper it was barbecue Reaper. almonds, but they know that I have like a geographical tongue. Yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> And so we, uh, they're feeding me the barbecue ones and then they slipped some of those ghost pepper ones in there. And I can't handle hot because I have a, like a geographical tongue, which makes flavors really strong for me. And they slipped it in and then, then laughed, you know, for 10 miles while I cried in the backseat. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. What is a geographical tongue? So a geographical tongue is basically, I mean, I could show you, it's kind of gross, but I basically, I have like a bunch of crevices in my tongue that have like extra taste buds. It's like, you can kind of see the cracks. <laughs> oh yeah, I can. I can. I've never heard that term. That's crazy. It's pretty rare. So you get burned right? worse for eating hot stuff than normal people, and and everything tastes more rich to me. Interesting. I've never heard of that. Interesting. Yeah. Kind of a weird thing. What is what is follow about? So follow, um, so to kind of preface it, the whole album, you know, we've kind of selected a, a subject of mental health you know what i mean a lot of the songs are about mental health and what happens when your mental health slips and then uh what the process is of recovering you know all these people see you're going through this stuff and you can't really explain or relate to them exactly what you're going through there's really no words and people have different theories about what that is but essentially i had a nervous breakdown in 2018 from stress, alcohol, and drug abuse. And essentially I lost my mind. I uh, went into a kind of, yeah, a mental state where I had different symptoms of, you know, they were trying to diagnose me, but I'm weird as hell anyway. So they were having trouble doing that, you know? But so Follow is that, that song, we were actually writing it the day I really snapped. These guys were there for all of it. You know what I mean? Me going to the mental hospital, returning from it and trying to like rebuild myself through it also following it way down was the kind of talking about how i kind of had to go to the bottom and hit rock bottom twice you know i had to bounce a couple times before i could come back up well when you when he actually sorry when he actually broke we were we wrote the chorus to trippy and then afterwards we wrote more follow so when he got better so there's kind of a big parallel going on here. Yeah, I, I went to the mental hospital, which was awful. I mean, I could tell you some awful things about it. Uh, healthcare is kind of a rough place because they don't really know how to help people, you know? And I felt blessed because I was one of the less severe people there. The people there were way far gone to the point of no return, you know? Uh, 
having conversations with themselves constantly, not being able to stay in the present moments. And I was experiencing some of that. I was basically kind of stuck in a daydream like state where I'd kind of check out and I'd have all this inner dialogue going on, sometimes hallucinations. And then I'd come back and all this stuff had happened that I couldn't recall. And uh, so the whole album is kind of a parallel to what me and my dad went through and how Johnny Harpoon was made. Essentially, when my dad started having mental health issues, it started as he was talking to this ghost named Johnny Harpoon, who was this musician, and then ended up kind of becoming him. And he was a harmonica player for like a folk group that we, we performed a lot. And so the whole album is kind of centered around that mental health and losing your mind. And there's some spiritual twists on it. You know, I, I have some far out beliefs that I kind of throw into the writing process. And then that mixed with, you know, just clever lines that were fitting, you know what I mean? Where we couldn't figure out where to write. Ryan stepped in a lot towards when we would go to the studio. We had a couple weeks left and he has a different take on vocals that uh, really kind of helped and made our sound sound less redundant. So yeah, follow is essentially about uh yeah losing your mind and how like you don't know it was the worst thing that ever happened to me but like the best because it was such a reality check you know well i'm glad you're here with us today brother for real <laughs> moving on keeping keep chugging putting out awesome music and uh, i'm gonna jam follow and then we'll do some light funny funny questions and uh, do a little oh. trivia all right let's do it by the way, I just realized that you guys can't see. I do this all the time. This happens whenever I don't have a co-host. I forget to share. Now you guys can probably see it and hear it. Oh yeah, it's one of my absolute favorites. I love that song so much. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate fantastic. That. It was one of the. We wrote that years before we recorded it. A lot of these songs, me and Ryan, when we first started, he was in his little apartment playing an electronic kit, and uh, so the chorus to follow. I mean, it was we had it written for like years before we ever put it into a song and it, it's fun to reflect on that because we jammed for so many years before we actually really kind of started the band you know well i only joined in 20 yeah nick kind of was the third piece and he moved here from this little podunk town to uh to play in our band essentially and uh make his you know his life worked out better here in general but it was uh it was a long process and it started off me and ryan just getting stoned and we wanted to write songs like the time we were listening to a lot of Harvard and Minus the Bear, and, uh, and I, I can I, I can hear it up. I can hear it I can hear <laughs> I it in, in the music, especially in Harvard Crows and Carnivores. Harvard is a heartbreaking subject for me, bro. <laughs> Some of the I, more progressive stuff started happening when I joined, but um, he did have a couple songs that were pretty darn progressive. I uh, yeah, we had like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Larry. No, no, you go for it. Well, I was gonna tell a quick Harvard story. I saw Harvard at this at this place called Chain Reaction in Anaheim really, oh. really, really early. I mean, there's probably 25 to 30 people at the show, and they were the headliner. And there was nobody there. And, uh, like, a lot of the early bands, the opening locals had left. A couple of them were sticking around, but they, uh, like, at one point, there's, like, a little smoking area, and I used to smoke cigarettes at this time. And I had chilled with Harvard for, like, 25 minutes. Uh, the coolest dudes ever I ended up buying their album... And holy sh! It's one of my favorite albums ever made. Inevitable and I. Inevitable and I. Yeah, it's one of the best albums ever made in my Gosh, opinion. Gosh, what a good album! We always talk about that album. Harvard's a heartbreaking subject for us because what a gem! And that album, wow! Like I love. I think it was called From the Bird's Cage. I love that album, but I am so touched. Uh, that track where it gets all really melancholy. I'm happy for you mm -hmm. like such touching work you know that uh juturna circus survived juturna producer did that album no but i can tell now that yeah it, it has like a feel the juturna feel to it to me like the this uh i don't know the magic i'll say fellas if well, if we were if i was to ask you about any one movie or tv show but you you guys collectively know more about this movie or tv show than anything else you will not get stumped if I ask you trivia on it. What would you decide? Talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna play Crows and Carnivores, one of my one of the classics, one of my favorites right here. You guys decide, and I'll, I'll we'll find out in a second what you pick. Oh 
Oh yeah, I love Chain Reaction, Metallic. It's such a small venue, but big bands play there. It probably holds like, I don't know, 250 people. Fellas, have you decided on a on a movie or TV show? Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> okay, that one's gonna be <laughs> that one's gonna be hard for me to find trivia on, but I'll do my best. Do you um, want, uh, I've been binge watching Stranger Things a bunch of times, and I got Stranger Things down pretty hard. I have I have some Dragon Ball Z trivia, but I I just don't know anything about the show whatsoever besides Goku and. Hama Kama Yea and all that stuff. Uh, I've not, I've probably seen like one episode ever. So I don't know if what I'm asking is hard or not. So I probably won't stump you, but that's okay. The advantage is yours. Let me find a question. Okay, I got one. Your first Dragon Ball Z trivia. The very first time. Goku turns Super Saiyan. Who is he fighting? Frieza. Frieza is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. Damn it. See, I don't know if I'm asking hard ones or not. That's the problem. Do you guys like dubstep whatsoever? Uh, well, Ryan used to uh, Ryan used to be a DJ and write dubstep all this time, so for sure. I'll tell you what, Ryan. Is there any way you can send me a track and the mandatory dubstep is one of your tracks? Oh, jeez, it's not that good, but yeah, give me a second. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Blue Dream on Gypsum. What is that? What is that about? Blue Dream on Gypsum. So I grew up on the road, Gypsum Drive. Uh, that was the first song Sky Drifter ever wrote. Me and Ryan wrote it in a spare bedroom in that house. And uh, that's uh, that's like the creation of Johnny Harpoon. That's like kind of where it all starts. And it, it talks about, um, you know, when I'm saying you've been dreaming again, it's talking about those episodes where you uh kind of check out and then you know you'll be talking to the wall or doing whatever on autopilot over here but it's also talking about how i kind of uh you know theoretically my spiritual belief is that we are all kind of stuck in a dream in some way and a lot of the album parallels that the idea that life itself is a dream i can dig that life itself is a dream Let's check it out. Oh, you're both. I'm going to try and stump you. Super fire. Super. This whole album is fantastic. But uh, Thank you. That's my favorite track on the record. Really? So it's always in the set? Always. It's usually... Uh, we were opening with it for a while. I like to open with it. Uh, we've been opening with Pilot lately because it's one of the harder ones, so I like to get it out of the way. But that's probably my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. All right, if BG, I sent you two links. Uh, the first one is more like a trap, like hybrid trap dubstep track, and the second one is more of like a mid-tempo glitch hop track. So I haven't heard these in like probably eight years, so I don't know. Do your worst. Hybrid uh, dubstep? Hell yeah. Like trap, like hybrid trap dubstep trap. Like you ever listen to like a poshy or like uh, lampshade core? I don't know. I haven't even listened to dubstep since. Since antique beats were the thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Rhino Sword. No this is a hundred times better than you made it sound like. Like I kind of went into it thinking, man, this is gonna. F no, I'm just playing. But uh, <laughs> this is really actually legit. <laughs> this is actually thank legit. You, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's see the second one. Part of mandatory dub set. This is Lobster Claw. I don't even remember how this started. I Lobster don't even Claw. This song, but I remember this being one of my favorite ones, but I do not even remember how it sounds. So 
door notice. Give me like 10 to 15 minutes and I got you. Yo, these are legit. I'm being honest. Even though they sound eight or nine years old, I wouldn't know that they were eight or nine years old. Like they, I hear stuff like that current music right now. And the bass is go just- to like, uh, Go to like three quarters of the way through the track. It's like, it's like really crazy right there. Just play it for a second, unless you close it already, my bad. I can still open it. Yeah, right there. Yeah, this is cool. Hell yeah. Thank you for showing So that. let me tell you something about Ryan. He's always undercutting himself. Like, you know, uh, I'm always blowing him up because he's like, oh, hot garbage. Everything he does, hot garbage or whatever. But phenomenal drummer. And he's one of the, he's really crucial on himself because he'll watch like the best drummers on YouTube play, you know. But he's been playing for freaking ever. His dad is maybe the best guitar player I've ever met and had Ryan playing in his cover band, playing like, who knows, 50 songs a night since he was a kid. Dang! So he's way in the pocket, and he played jazz for years. He's a jazz drummer, but he's always, like, knocking himself, and I'm like, you know. So just, uh, just uh, he's blow a him up a little he's bit. A, he's know? a stud in my book, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, fellas, this could be the most important question I've asked you all day. In Dragon Ball Z, there's a movie called The Return of Cooler. Have you seen The Return of Cooler? Yes. What is the name of the huge spaceship that fixes any flaws in Mechanical Cooler's body? Oh my God. I got you. I just watched this movie with my daughter like a month ago too, but I, I don't know it. You stumped me, you get me, bro. All three of you guys are stumped? I, we don't even know Dragon Ball Z, it's just like- Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is the big geet star, G-E-T-E, -E, the big geet star. It says the big geet star almost destroys new Namek, but Goku and Vegeta destroy it before that happens. Yeah, I literally just watched that like a month ago with my daughter too, I'm ashamed. Well, I'm glad I was able to stump you. Uh, what is, uh, is, there, is there ever another artist that you guys have wanted to get on a track, but maybe just hasn't worked out yet? We're actually talking to a couple. Um, there's a bunch, man. Uh, I don't know if I can say for sure who's going to help. Can we say for sure? Who might? I mean, it's all speculation at this point, so, yeah. Um, you know what, though? Also, uh, Ryan, pass, pass Laramie the hot sauce for the uh, for the stump, if you if you would. Please, yeah. please sir. Please. Oh, right, you guys are gonna have to just a, just a drop here. or two. Just a drop or two. Just you oh, it's going to hurt you, buddy. All right, I might be... Uh, might pass out. Let's see. Just a draw. Uh, we've been talking to a few people. Uh, we want to get uh, Ryan Rexy to probably do something. Um, what are we talking to Dylan? Yeah, maybe? Dylan from, uh, God, I love his band. I'm, Wildlife Kings and Cicadia. Uh, that dude's really, really dope. Probably one of my favorite vocalists these days. Uh, ah! Talking to them. I don't know. He did it. Oh, <laughs> my God. Bro. <laughs> Already is crazy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> He said, that's fire right there. That's fire. What kind of flavor? I don't have no flavor. You don't taste the garlic? Oh my God, dude. Laramie, while you're suffering, who made you want to pick up a microphone when you were a kid? So, I was a choir boy. I was in jazz choir and choir, and my, my older brother who used to... We still kind of consider him in the band, but he's moved away to Alaska for a couple of years, but he was, uh, <laughs> you're handling it like a champ. You got uh, this. Dude, he is such a phenomenal singer as far as actually being, yeah, give me a little slurp off that. Holy <laughs> fuck. Gotta swish it like mouthwash. Hey, that does work pretty good. Yeah, beer helps a lot more than anything or milk. My brother could have probably had a career in just being a vocalist he was offered right out of high school to be in like famous barbershop quartets but essentially i was a guitar player most of my life i'd only been a vocalist for one other band before i moved up to montana and we came when we made sky drifter i was just going to be the guitar player but we couldn't find anyone to sing and so i just started taking classes online and mimicking people like claudio sanchez and anthony green and skyler from he is legend uh trying to 
figure out what worked for me. But essentially, I was just giving it by default because we could never find anyone. Well, he says that, but Laramie really grew into the role of vocalist. There was, I remember when it was just me and Laramie, we, we had, for probably four or five months, we were talking about maybe trying to find a vocalist. I think we auditioned a couple people and nothing just really fit. And I don't know, he kind of just started doing it. And we kind of just started running with it. But like, Laramie's come a really, really long way as a vocalist in the last, like, I mean, he's he keeps going a long way, but like he, four or five years ago, he started taking it seriously to the point where he like started really impressing me with his vocals. And I kind of basically told him, I was like, well, you're basically the singer of the band now because we don't have another one. So we well, sound great. Moment. Don't let anything change. Thank you, bro. Thank you. That is still hot as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Same question for you, uh, for Nick and Ryan, as far as picking up your instrument for the first time. Like what what made you what artists made you want to do that? I know you're Ryan. You're probably gonna say your dad because of what Laramie told me about all the music. But maybe there was a particular album he played that you were like, "Wow, I want to drum um, like that guy," or "I want to play bass like that guy." I don't know. I've been playing music since I was in fourth grade or something, but picked up bass around 14 or 15 uh, just to be in a local band. And a lot of my influences at the time were like Hope's Fall with Satellite Years and um, great record. Hardcore, more hardcore artists. I like Cody a lot too, I guess. Um, Your first band that I heard you in, the first show I ever went to, I was 14 years old and Nick was the bass player for a band called Fallen Day. And they had some, not even later, even more, but they had some like real Kill Switch vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Kill Switch was a big influence at one point for me, but honestly, I, I went to school for music. So there's a lot of jazz artists for me that like Jocko, uh, Pistorius and Victor Wood, a bunch of bass players like Ray Brown. He's actually the musician in the band. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, the, Most bands just find the uh, worst guitar player and make him the bass player, but Nick's actually <laughs> like a bass player. <laughs> Ryan, what would you say is the, the one album, though, that influenced you the most when you were younger? Album is hard. Uh, I did start playing drums when I was really young. I think I got my first drum set in like first grade or something. Um, and my dad at the time, uh, he was in a band with like five or six other dudes and they converted our old garage into this big jam room. And there was this guy, I still remember his name, his name was Jackie Pope. Um, and he used to be an old Marine Corps drummer and he was on the police department with my, my dad at the time. And one day he brought over this like, probably like seven or eight piece like giant pearl drum set like like big bright red pearl drum set with like all the nice cymbals and like a big rack and i had been like kind of playing with guitar before that but i i remember that day like walking into that room and seeing that drum set sitting there and like that was when the, the switch was like oh you're you, you're gonna play drums um i didn't really start taking drums seriously until i was in high school um and started playing with these guys back in our old metal bands and stuff i'd say a lot of my my influences when I actually started trying to like take music seriously and progress is probably it's a lot of minus the bear. It's a lot of he is legend well, um, Thursday, like Tucker rule from Thursday. Like Thursday was one of my favorite bands for so long. Like, dude, well, did you phenomenal. guys know, did you guys know two members of Thursday, one member of Coheed and, yep. a and Anthony green have, have formed a project. I'm missing one other band. Uh, so, funny story, we have, uh, like, Circa, Anthony Green. Yeah, we have, like, 25 followers on Twitter. Oh, My Chemical Anthony Romance. Anthony Green yeah. is one of our 25 followers. So really? So, kind of cool. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, this is kind of, uh, interesting, too, is that I was a senior, at, or maybe a junior. When you were a senior. I was a yeah. senior. Me and Nick met in jazz band. It was my freshman my year, <laughs> and it was his senior year, and he was playing bass in jazz band, and I was playing drums in jazz band. That was when I first met Nick. Anthony Green has said no to being on this show twice. <laughs> oh, so, shot down. I know, I know, but it is so, what it is. What did you think of that single by LS Dunes? Is that what it is, LS Dunes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. It was it was kind of more like punkish a little bit. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and I, I definitely... It, it was, to me, it's like the most band. of all the bands involved, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, it's the most Thursday sounding of those bands to me agreed involved i haven't listened to it i need to check it out and, and it's, i think it's because there's two members of thursday in it and then everybody else is just one member of each other band i mean we were 
when we started playing too, like we were, it was like at the height of the emo days too, right? Yeah. So Thursday and a bunch of taking back Sunday. Well, Thursday but we were Sunday. we were like into into the underground stuff. Like I remember it unearthed the oncoming the oncoming oh, storm. Yeah. That, that album, a, bro, a huge record for Laramie and I when that that came out, and that's kind of where we were at. And that was produced by Adam D of Killswitch. I didn't find that out till years later, but yeah, basically a lot of the stuff that Adam D produced in like 2004, 2008 era. Define the great line, dude. Yeah, Adam's the man. Adam's yeah, the man. Was, bands like you know arsonist gets all the girls and things like that like bands like that back in the day so it was, it's the myspace it was, days right there yeah hell yeah fellas so, we have uh, i think we have time for one more one more big question but i'm sorry what were you what were you gonna say well i was just saying that i moved into ryan's house as a kid and his family kind of partially adopted me for a few months and it was all blasting the oncoming storm Drinking Mountain Dew and playing Halo for like months. It was just that. Halo and X Men Legends. X Men Legends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dang, I don't remember X Men Legends. I, I have to look that one up. I've probably played it, but uh, I've played a million video games. I used to be a Xbox achievement hunter. Almost. Are you? Do you play right now? What are you playing right now? If you are playing, I'm just curious. I I almost don't have time because I, I have Logan. I have two kids and a wife, and this show takes like ten hours a day. But I I play a lot of COD Mobile. Every oh, yeah. single day, I never miss a day. Have you, have you seen the previews for Lost Light? It just dropped on iOS like two days ago. I get it. it. The one, the trailer we watched, I, that doesn't sound familiar. The trailer we watched the other day is a first-person shooter where the gun is the voice of Rick and Morty. <laughs> I I don't remember the name of the of the game, but it looks like Bioshock meets meets borderlands but the gun talks to you and it makes like adult jokes the whole time you're playing the game and it's uh, it's the voice of rick and morty i forget the name of the game but that game looks awesome but uh the important question i want to ask you guys i ask every artist that we have on the show this final same question what is a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has told you that was an eye opener or changed things for you or the worst mistake you ever made as an artist that you don't want any starting up band to make. I can take it, but yeah, I take it. <laughs> so the advice I would get give is, um, you know, and me and Nick have been touching this a lot since we're writing this new record. Just keep writing songs. Even if you're halfway through and you think it's garbage, keep going. Even if the lines aren't what you want, the melodies aren't what you want, try to complete it. And then go back to it from the start and start fixing the stuff you didn't like, you know? Because sometimes there's gold in there, but you don't see it through that filter of shit that you hate. Yeah. Um, and I've kind of adopted that style writing from Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins and uh, the Beatles. Metallica said the same thing. Heck yeah. Uh, Lizzie wants to know, did you guys get any words of wisdom from Hinder or Hoobastank? Uh, well, they thought we were really good and that was flattering and it was cool to meet such big artists that were down to earth. Like they came and partied with us and kicked it with us. And there's, you know, they talked a lot about just keeping the same group together as long as you can. You know, a lot of people, they'll get big and then they drop out after a couple of years, but bands that really make it are the ones that stick together for a long period of time. I can't really hear you. My bad, Nick. Talk that's, that's, that's kind of one of the biggest takeaways for me is if you've got a big group and you guys are okay with where you're living, um, making it all right, stick it out and keep going because a lot of the bands that have broken through... Um, Took them a decade. Yeah. Yeah, you never know yeah. which, which track's going to... Which track or TikTok video or whatever is, is the thing that, that pops and then all of a sudden... You wake up and you have 10,000 Spotify listeners out of nowhere. and It happens all the time. Yeah. So just keep grinding. Yeah. Keep making badass tunes. You guys are awesome, man. I've I've G-checked them, dude. chat. I've G-checked them. They're cool as f And they absolutely rock, for real. They really do. Yeah, dude. LBS Fest 2, we'll be there, dude. You book it, we're there. We're So I'm going to break some news right now, live on, on the show. If the other partners I'm involved with saw this, they'd be they'd be yelling at me for say this, uh, for saying this. I am kind of mad that we haven't announced the date of the next festival. 
we 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 they want one there's four other people involved in this one it was only me and like my team there's five major parties involved in this one because we want to have five stages and everyone's going to control one stage and we've already toured the venue and they have three dates on lock for us and it's like it's frustrating me and i can't be like hey guys come on you know i can't do a whole lot so i'm kind of thinking i'm gonna stay with them but do my own thing also maybe in february not sure no not even the mods know this but i might do another festival at the same location now knowing that i can what i can get away with and it can be all ages and a couple other things and it'll probably be like 75 80 degrees instead of 102 so uh <laughs> who knows we'll see we'll see that's breaking that news right there wind bro that was fun we hit two, two of our members on stage almost passed out at the last festival. <laughs> yeah, me. It was quite it was uh, quite brutally shout hot. Out, I don't remember his name. Uh it I I could have an hour ago, but now that we're doing it. Who the guy that used to be in the band with you that was DJing at that festival? Oh yeah. Uh it starts with a B. Byron? Uh, Byron. Byron. Long what hair, cool long guy. black hair. Yes. Yeah. What a cool guy and uh, his energy during his performance, dude. I mean, he was there. That dude's legit. And you send him my love. He's got a hit. What? He's got a hit him shirt. Hit him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's me and the band playing at uh, the Viper Room on that shirt. In that in LA. <laughs> Memories. We're, oh, man, you'd be looking wild. You chopped your hair, bro. Yeah, I used to have hair to the nips. Hair to the nips. Do you remember who the band was? Bring it back! Uh, I have their sticker on my fucking with, guitar case now. Where it lies. Where it lies. Those yeah. guys, Those guys were really cool. Chill, man. Yeah, yeah. They're, we loved everyone there, dude. The family vibes there were great. Nothing like I'd ever seen, dude. Everyone you talked to there was just lovely people. And yeah, we the, really appreciate it. All yeah. positivity all day. It, it was fun. But uh, hopefully we'll do it again. We'll do it again soon. You guys will obviously be one of the first people to know for sure. But uh, fellas, right. this is a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you guys. I love your music. We've been friends for a long time. Don't stop doing don't what you're doing. Don't change anything. Ryan, keep making awesome hot sauce, please. Uh, maybe just tone it down a little bit for for Laramie next time because it lit him up. <laughs> that, that rocked my ass. Do, do I we got some in my eye? I was over here crying, but I wasn't gonna like telecast that. <laughs> I know it's probably a long time away, but final, final, last, last question. Is there any timetable, maybe early 2023, of a brand new single? We've, been, we've made up a timeline. Uh, we have a timeline. We've written, I mean, we have probably 12 songs that are half written, but four that are getting closer. And we'd really like to put, uh, we're going to start tracking at the end of the year. We'd like to put one out early the next uh, in the next year. But we're really proud of this stuff. I feel like we're writing now what we tried to write on the last record, you know that feeling where you feel like you're arriving into your sound. I love it. When a band rises to their sound, arrives into their sound, it's perfect. Fellas, let's do a beer chug as we send them on out right here. Sky Drifter, yeah. everybody! Yeah. All right. You guys are awesome, man. I appreciate you guys doing this.